She could keep her balance without my help, and I almost wished she would fall. I waved the quick thanks to Teddy as he stood in the doorway, watching us walk away. I wish she hadn't called me. She stumbled a little on the last step, and I wanted to push her down and walk away. She walked behind me, sluggish and wobbly, as we made our way to my beat-up old Honda. I got in without looking at her and turned the car on without saying a word. Not that she noticed. My cold shoulder was as wasted on her as she was wasted on the alcohol. Her head was leaned up against the window, her brown hair plastered to her sweaty face, even though it was late October. She was completely lost to the world. I could have been her last crazy, abusive boyfriend, and she wouldn't have even known it. The sight of her slumped form rocking with the sway of the car made something deep within me burn. I want to say it's disappointment, but it's so much more. The sight brings back childhood memories I've tried to keep locked away. Memories I've burned the last time she said, this is the last time. You promised me, Mom, I whispered to myself. You promised me you would stop. I roll the windows down to give her some air. It's not for her sake. I just don't want a repeat of three months ago. She threw up all over my center console. When the cold night air hits her pasty face, she cracks her eyes open just a little bit and mumbles something unintelligible. I ignore her. I wish the cold air breathing against her face would blow some sense into her. She reaches for the window button and I slap her hand away. No, Mom, you have to keep it down. I just cleaned my car, I hissed at her, grabbing her hand again from making a second attempt. I'm fine, she slurs, turning to face me with sloppy movements and reaching out to touch my face. I'm fine, I promise I'm fine, she repeats. I bat her hand away from my face. I don't even want to look at her, much less be touched by her. She was always very cuddly when intoxicated. When I was younger, she would stumble into the house late at night and wake me and my sisters up so we could sleep in her bed. The memory brings back the bittersweet feeling of being warmed and wrapped in my mother's arms with her soft snores lulling me to sleep and the smell of whiskey tainting the air. Mom, you're not fine. You can barely walk. I want to shout, but my cracking voice can barely make it above a whisper. You're sick, Mom. You need help. You promised me you'd stop. I can feel the sting in my eyes, and I know the tears are not far behind. When I receive no reply, I look over and see my mother slumped forward, her hair hanging down into her lap, her eyes closed. My words fell on deaf ears, and not just because she fell asleep. I leave her be and make the rest of the drive to her apartment in silence. I wonder how someone that looks so much like me can be so opposite. I almost want to slam on the brakes when I finally reach her apartment and watch her head crash into the dashboard. I push her shoulder to wake her up. Mom, you're home. I grunt, shaking her shoulder with more force to rouse her. She blinks awake and yawns wide, scratching her cheek. She turns towards me and smiles with a crooked smile. Thanks, Lorelai. I knew I could count on you. That's why I told Teddy to call you, she replies, still slurring and opens the car door with a creak. I want to say to her that the only reason she called is because none of my sisters would pick up their phones for her, even if she did decide to call them. They gave up a long time ago. I wish I had their strength. She exits the car and leaves the air full of cheap whiskey. She closes the door lightly and walks around the car, stumbling up the cracked steps to a paint-peeled door. She has trouble with the keys for a while, but eventually gets the door unlocked and opened. Mom, I call out the rolled window, getting her attention just before she goes inside. She wobbles and turns around to look at me. This is the last time, Mom. Don't call me the next time you need someone to pick you up. I won't answer. I mutter this softly with a stinging throat and red-rimmed eyes. You said that last time, Lorelai. We both know that's not the truth, she mutters and closes the door. 
with the smell of alcohol still in the air, I begin to realize that maybe me and my mom aren't so different at all. Our last time is never the last time. We just continue to stumble. <laughs>